guys so I wanted to get on here and talk a little bit about um, just a little experience so this is something that I'm randomly thinking about and since I have some time to film I just thought let's talk about the time that I purchased a used deck um, it was a used copy of the demon tarot and it was one that I purchased off of somebody that I used to follow back in the day, like five years ago when I was literally just starting my tarot journey. Um, it was via Tumblr and this person was selling a couple of their decks and I noticed that they were selling the Demon Tarot. And that was a deck that I was always really curious about because of the fact that it was demonology and I was always like, just curious to see what the different traits of the demons mean and that kind of thing um, and so I remember I had messaged her and I told her I was interested and so I purchased the deck I don't even remember how much I paid it was like it wasn't that much um, and she sent the deck over to me and then I remember when I got the deck I opened up the package and as soon as I opened up this package the ugliest feeling came out it was a feeling like I don't know how to explain it like it came out as soon as I opened this package and I took the, the cards out I hadn't even taken them out of the packaging but I just had this wave this emotion of like a scary feeling and um, I remember thinking something's something is off about this about this deck the energy is off now I was already you know maybe a few months into my tarot journey I have already been working with the cards I was doing readings for people mostly free readings that's how I started out and so I was aware of the importance of cleansing a deck before using it whether it's a new deck or definitely a used deck um, and I just remember thinking the energy was so off with these cards um, now this particular person that I purchased from did practice witchcraft um, and at that time I too was heavily into witchcraft I wasn't um, I was calling myself a witch and I was you know practicing a lot of candle magic and a lot of like writing my own spells and that kind of thing like I was heavy into it too um, not so much anymore but um, I just remember this individual was um, and I remember thinking just something fell off with the energy and I you know I'm not placing judgment on this person but I did wonder you know what sort of magic or what sort of um, energy work was this person doing? Um, what kind of a household did this person live in because of the energies that came with this with this deck of cards? So, um, needless to say, I opened up the box and I remember I looked very, very vaguely just kind of sifted through a couple of the cards but I remember I never took out all of the deck I the feeling was so strong it was so heavy um, that I was really spooked at that point um, so I remember putting the couple of cards back that I took out and I wrapped it back up and I left it in my room I didn't touch it after that um, and I remember for a solid week I was left with this heavy energy feeling in my room now um, immediately after this took place you know I I remember um, I think I seeked out some advice from a, another reader and kind of like what should I do you know this is what's going on I cleansed the cards um, I remember I sprayed them down and well, I sprayed the box down. <laughs> I wasn't taking the cards out. Um, I remember I doing that, and it didn't help. Um, I just remember the following day coming home um, from work, and the whole house felt normal. But as soon as I would walk up the stairs into my room, I had that heavy 
claustrophobic feeling like I was stepping into a room full of people but there was nobody in the room um, I remember having the feeling of just like this heaviness it was like this massive energy was just sitting in the room and it was with me um, I remember feeling like I was being stared at I remember feeling like somebody was just in the room with me but even though I was by myself um, at this time, my husband and I were just boyfriend girlfriend, so we were dating, and there were times where he came over, and um, I have a little angel statue that I had since I was a little girl. Um, it was gifted to me by my dad, and I remember I had it. I had her sitting on like the on the shelf next to my jewelry box, and I remember there was like this one time. <laughs> during this week that I was dealing with this stuff um, the angel statue was turned backwards she was facing the wall and um, I remember I specifically asked my boyfriend are you messing with me and are you teasing me like what are you doing are you playing a joke and he was like what are you talking about and I remember I asked him uh, just tell me like are you are you doing anything like are you messing with any of my stuff in my room and he was like what are you talking about and so then I had told him um about the little statue and he said no I, I haven't touched that I promise and nobody else goes into my room um at the time my brother was around still and my sister I don't think my sister was home anymore I think she had already moved out um and my brother never would go into my room without you know me being home or whatever and my parents never would go into my room I, I'm upstairs and they're downstairs so there was never a time where anyone else except for me or my boyfriend were in the room and so he had said it wasn't him so I remember I specifically turned my angel statue around um, and then it happened again <clears throat> there was another day I don't know if this was like the day the next day or a couple days after that but my little angel statue was facing the wall again. Um, and that freaked me out. I remember at that time also, I started developing um, nightmares. So I was having a string of nightmares. And, and I'm not talking about just like a little, like a short little nightmare. These were prolonged dreams. Like I was dreaming for a long time. These were nightmares that developed and it was like the same one or like similar every single night. Um, and like I said, I was having this feeling for a week. And so then finally, I was looking up, you know, ways to cleanse the space and this and that. Because this is the first time I've ever dealt with this, you guys. Um, so I remember a thing my grandma had told me to do um, when I would pray is to anoint the walls, the, the walls, the doorways with um, olive oil and pray, you know, say a prayer. So I remember I was on the hunt for a Michael Archangel candle. So if you guys have ever been to like the drug stores or like Dollar Tree or whatever, if you've seen like those um, religious candles, they're really tall and you light them for seven days and they... They're usually like white or red. Sometimes they have like a, a picture of Jesus on it or they'll have a picture of the angel. Um, so I was on the hunt for a Michael the Archangel candle. And I am not kidding you, you guys, when I would go to the store, I couldn't find, I couldn't find one. Um, I remember I was at the Dollar Tree and they usually have them like a stack, rows of them on the shelves. And I remember all I could find was the guardian angel candle. I could find the plain white ones, but I could not find Michael the Archangel. And as you guys know, um, Michael the Archangel is known for um, um, fighting Satan, the devil. And so that's why I specifically wanted him. He's a protector. Um, and I couldn't find him. And so I remember I purchased the guardian angel candle instead. I um, said a prayer. I was saying the Our Father. I was, you know, my husband, well, boyfriend at the time, he had gotten me a crucifix because, like I said, I was having really bad nightmares. And he got me a crucifix that he had dipped in holy water at the church we were going to. And um, he told me to sleep with it either under my pillow or I had it on my bedside table, but I put it under my pillow. And um, I remember I lit the candle with the intention of, you know, protection. And so for a solid week, this is week two of doing the, had the candle lit the whole time. 
Um, I remember I was spraying the room with my energy spray, the, the cleansing mist, because I can light sage. I anointed the doorways. Um, I would recite like the Our Father every night. Um, and I was just praying for just um, relief. I was praying for like protection um, and for this spirit, this energy to go away. Um, it took two weeks. I want to say it was two solid weeks of this thing to finally leave. Um, it was persistent prayer. It was persistent like just the intention of get out of my space kind of stuff. And eventually it left. Now, what did I do with the deck, right? I never touched it after that one time. I put it in a bag, and I, re I remember I was so scared to throw it out because I was just thinking, like, if I throw this away, is this disrespectful of the deck? I th I've even contemplated, like, burying it. Honestly, you guys, I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I still feel guilty for leaving it. I donated it. <laughs> I remember I left it in a donation bin um, and I figured um, the ladies that worked at the library where I left it at because it was one of the older libraries I used to work at um, they were very religious ladies and I knew that if they were to see that they would throw it out um, so to, that's where I would <laughs> that's where I would collect a lot of my like witchy books and stuff in the past was because um, the ladies would don't they the ones who would deal with the donations they would have a pile of stuff that they were throwing away and I would always look in that pile and I found tarot books and stuff so <laughs> I knew that, that that deck would end up being thrown away so I wrapped it in the plastic bag and I left it there um, and then I took on a different job like Maybe it was like a week later. So I know, I don't know whatever happened to that deck. I remember for that remaining week, I never saw it show up um, on the shelves. So I I still feel a little guilty about the fact that I left it. Um, but I didn't know what else to do. And it scared me to the point where it was like, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to risk inviting that feeling that vibe that energy back into my space so I just did what I felt I was what all, all that I could do and I'm sure that there was other ways that I could have dealt with this um, I'm sure many of you can if you've had that experience you would know what to do um, but it was scary it was scary and it was an eye-opener um, since then I have purchased used decks constantly that's actually my favorite thing to do is purchase someone else's deck um i think once you've had an experience like that you're not really afraid of the possibility of that thing happening because it's like when you know how to deal with it it's not as scary as what it could be um so since then i've purchased used decks um i also purchased a brand new copy of the demon tarot um i want i wanted it in my collection i'm not afraid of it um i didn't want to fear it so i think i purchased it for that specific reason because i wanted to show myself i wasn't scared um so i do i still have the copy um it's a brand new copy that i purchased i think it was at barnes and noble um and i used it i've, I've used it um and so it's just one of those things you guys like that is my little story of you know a little spooky story for you guys to hear but um I wanted to put that out there because I know some of you that's like a fear some of you have questions about that or some of you fear like purchasing used decks for that reason um some of you have dealt with you know negative energies and or fear of that kind of thing and you know it is something to be fearful but it is also very smart to be aware and to understand that um there are ways, you know, to to deal with that and to get away from it um, and to prevent it. But um, it's all what you make of it. You know, that kind of energy does feed off of fear. Um, but if you're going to be a reader and if you're going to deal with those tools, it because that's what it is, the deck is a tool, um, you should also be very much aware of how to deal with 
be negative. There is a negative side to everything. And if you are aware of it and if you are knowledgeable of it, then there's nothing to fear. But if, like I said, if you are willing to deal with these kind of things, if you're going to read cards, you better know how to cleanse your deck. Um, because it's just, that's just plain silliness in my opinion. If you're going to deal with tools like that, and you're not going to be aware of the fact that, yeah, there can be negative energies and, and this and that. Um, it's better to be knowledgeable of it and to know what to do in case it happens. You know, protect yourself and be smart. So anyways, if you have questions about this, leave them below. I would love to hear your comments. Um, and tell me what you would have done if you were in my situation. What would you have done with the deck? Um, I would love to know. So. Thanks you guys for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye loves.